You all know and what you came for is that we are here today to formally announce Phil Dawson as the Hyde Park High School head football coach. And because we live in arguably the biggest small town in the world, many of you in this room know Shannon and Phil and their family from their previous time in Austin. Some of you probably uh, know him because either you or your children have picked him for your Madden team continuously at some point in your life. Um, if you're a Longhorn fan, then I probably can't list all the records he still holds from DKR. And for those of you who have watched any professional football in the last 25 odd years, you can't help but be aware of who he is. And he's here today with his parents and Shannon's parents and their um, oldest son, Drew, and we are so happy to welcome them all into the Hyde Park community. But we're not here today to talk about the past. We're here no matter what part of the journey that you've shared with them. And Jenny Jeter Aldridge in the back can tell you a few stories from Lake Highlands. It's a small, small world. Um, we're here today to talk about the future. And what we're talking about today is a new chapter in the story. And that new chapter is Coach Phil Dawson, Hyde Park Panther coach. And so we're going to welcome him at this time. Leanne, thank you. Uh, this whole process has been first class every step of the way, and you deserve all the credit for that. So thank you for those kind words. Boy, I got you fooled, so we'll, I'll take them, but uh, that was great. Uh, I've only been here a week, but so far I've been blown away with the culture of the people that I've met so far at Hyde Park. Uh, faithful, professional, intentional, uh, and welcoming. I think describe, or the, those are terms that come to mind when I think back on all the people I've met so far uh, here. You deserve a lot of credit for the team you've built and the culture you've built. So I'm honored to partner with the uh, faculty and staff already here. And y'all can give me a hard time for being the new guy. That's great. But I look forward to partnering with you. Uh, several members of the task force are here today. Uh, Mike Burton, you were kind of my guy through it all, uh, reached out, uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, went down the road a little bit with a couple other schools through the interview process, and I can say without a doubt, uh, the process that your task force ran was the most professional, thorough, well done process of any I was a part of. So thank you and those of you who are here as well. Uh, the staff here, you know, throughout the onboarding process, I get to meet you guys and and I've had some time to sit down and, and talk with many of you. Uh, I'm honored to be one of you. And so we're going to do this together. Uh, it takes all of us. And uh, it's been awesome getting to know you guys. Uh, Bruce, where's Bruce at? Our AD. I don't, oh, he's in the back. Uh, Bruce, thank you. Uh, Bruce is taking me under his wing, is uh, helping me with all. I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose. Uh, but thank you for your leadership and integrity. Look forward to working with you. Uh, I've been fortunate to meet some of the friends of the program throughout the process. Uh, that was an honor. I uh, look forward to getting to know everyone in this community as we build this thing together. Uh, just been overwhelming from day one. When I retired in 2019 from a really long, some would say too long NFL playing career, I think the people in Arizona, Bruce, would probably say I should have hung it up a little quicker than I did, but uh, I had the honor to go back to Cleveland and retire. Not many players get to do that. And it was a press conference kind of like this, and I was going through all my stuff, and I, I wanted them to know just 
What were the most important things I learned in 21 years of playing professional football? And one of the things I shared was that any success you ever accomplish as a player, you never do it alone. And this is going to be no different. As we build this program, any success we have will be not the result of one person's effort. It's going to take everybody, uh, administration, faculty, uh, coaches, players, parents, community, the high school, the middle school, the elementary school, the Pop Warner, the cheerleaders, the prancers, the student section, the booster club. It takes all of us. And as much as I want to coach ball all day long, I recognize I'm going to spend a lot of time mobilizing the troops because it takes all of us. We need those little boys, little girls wearing their Panther stuff at the earliest ages dreaming about getting to this high school someday. That's what we need to do. So it is all hands on deck. We need help from all areas. No contribution is too small. And so we are recruiting everyone that's associated with Hyde Park to dive in. Uh, I have a motto for my family, and my family's here with me today. We call it the three Fs, uh, faith, family, and football. And the goal is to keep, the, keep life in that order. We don't always do that, but the goal is to keep them in that order. You know, faith, it all starts there for me, and it will start there for this program. Uh, any kind of the, the truth, if you want to find truth, purpose, and identity, it's all found in Jesus. That's the only place. Everything else comes and goes. Jesus is there forever. So truth, we'll build this program on the truth of God. Uh, we will be purposeful in how we go about it, uh, recognizing that God give, has given us the opportunity and the ability, and we're going to turn around and honor him with it. And then we are going to... Uh, work intentionally every day to tap into his power source. You know, external motivators are cool, but they only work for a little time. I remember the first time I ever went out in front of a thousand people in a football stadium about hyperventilated. By the end of my career, I could go out in front of a hundred thousand people and it wouldn't even move the needle. So yes, we will do cool things to motivate the boys externally. But we recognize that will, over time, lose its effectiveness. Internal motivation never goes away. And if we can get a group of boys to recognize that God is their power source, and we plug into that, just hold on to your hats. And so that's how faith will factor into our program. The second F is family. Uh, a lot of things have been said about me through the years in my public life, uh, some of them accurate. Most of them not. But one thing that everyone has agreed upon throughout these years is that I treasure my family. It all starts with my wife, Shannon. <laughs> uh, Shannon, uh, as fine a woman as I know. Uh, as they say in the football world, I outkick my coverage. Uh, she's as faithful and selfless and capable as any woman I know. Here we go again. Y'all are going to love her. In fact, I thought I was crushing the interview process. Felt really good about it. And then we came back for another round, and I brought Shannon. I don't think Leanne was going to let us leave until she got our commitment. So uh, you guys are going to love Shannon. Mama D, we call her. She's going to serve in all kinds of capacities, both players, other moms, students around campus. We really see this as our ministry field, and we're ready to dive in. My little son Drew's here. Uh, those of you who follow high school football in Texas probably remember the name Drew Dawson. Uh, went 23-2 and two as a starter at Vandegrift as a quarterback. Was named to the top 100 all-time high school football players in Austin, Texas. Uh, but he's even a better kid. And it means a lot that uh, he'd come up here from college at, in Texas State and be a part of this. Uh, my other two kids couldn't make it. They're in Nashville doing the school thing, getting educated as we call it. Uh, Bo, my second boy, uh, had a chance to coach him the last two years. How many dads get to do that? I mean, I, yeah, I don't even have words. Uh, Bo's getting recruited. He'll be playing college football, so we're excited to see his announcement in the next coming weeks. Uh, but 
he's as tenacious and tough a kid as I know. I'd love to get him around our boys here. Just maybe some of that will rub off and they can kind of see what it looks like to play the game the right way. And that's my second son, and he's an absolute joy to be his dad off the field. And finally, my daughter, Sophie Ann. I've already told the guys on the team here, she'll be here in the fall and you're not allowed to talk to her. Uh, I don't know many 15-year-old girls who are happy where they are, have started their high school career, have their friend group, life's kind of making sense for them. Uh, I don't know many 15-year-old girls that would be as selfless and gracious to allow their dad to go chase his dream and be uprooted the way my daughter has. And she gets that from her mom. My parents are here, Robert and Judy Dawson. Uh, they've been to a few football games. Uh, one of the great joys of my life, uh, you won't meet anyone that loves football more than my dad. And uh, it's been quite a blessing to me to be able to provide so many games for him to watch. And it keeps going. And then my mom, through it all, uh, sacrificed so much to get me started. And that's all kids need these days is an opportunity. And uh, from calling the Dallas Cowboys headquarters, trying to track down Ben Akajanian to get me my first kicking lesson, to being the team mom, to you name it. Mom, you always made it possible and made, you made me know that I was more important than football. My in-laws are here, Ken and Billy Shepard. I don't think they knew what they were signing up for when they gave me permission to, as Ken said, uh, bury Shannon with my people. Uh, they didn't know football would take us all over this country and, and create a lot of time and distance between us, but your support all along the way has been incredibly meaningful. And finally, football, the third F, and I know that's why we're here today, so let's get going. What can you expect from this football program? Okay, I have a lot of stuff. I boiled it down to five of the most important things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go all out all the time. Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work with all your heart is under the Lord, not for man. We're doing it. Football's no exception. The good thing is football demands that, so it all fits. God's way works, so that's what we're going to do. These boys are going to learn that no matter what we're doing, we're going all out. Effort is completely up to them. I will not coach effort. You'll either give it or you'll be hanging out with me on the sideline. Nothing personal, that's just how it's gonna be. We will be prepared. We're gonna know the game of football. I'm putting a staff together that is gonna teach the game of football, the nuance, the, the attention to detail, the laser-like focus. Uh, that is critically important. Everybody thinks when you get to the highest level, it's because you're the most talented. Obviously, those guys are talented, but the guys that truly have success are the guys that pay attention to detail, they're students of the game, and so we're going to create an environment where our boys learn the game of football. We will be prepared on Friday nights. We're going to respect all of our opponents. We're not going to fear any of them. That's critically important to me. We will respect all, fear none. Uh, because of our effort, because of our level of preparation, because of the process we go through, our boys are going to be chomping at the bit for a Friday night. Doesn't matter what's happened before, I don't care. It's all about what's next. We will be process driven. It's real easy to set goals, and I know there's a lot of books and a lot of authors who made a lot of money about goal setting. I'm not against any of that, but we're gonna be focused on what do we do today to get better. One step at a time. The day after we win our first state championship will be just as, as important as the day we won it. Every day, a intentional, deliberate, day-by-day -day grind of chasing our best. God's given us a potential. Our job and our response to him is to chase our best. And we will do that every day. I've already told the boys this. We are earning the right to enjoy Friday nights. You don't just show up and try to have fun on a Friday night. You pay the price. Nick Saban says it costs what it costs. There's no way around it. So we are going to earn the right to enjoy Friday nights. And finally, we are going to celebrate contributions. Uh, I know we live in a culture where it's all about the superstar, the guy that gets his name in the bright lights, all that. Uh, you're looking at someone who made a career out of playing five or six plays a game. So if there's a human on the planet 
that understands the significance of a single play and the opportunity to make an impact on your team with a single play, you're looking at them. And so my program is going to celebrate contributions both on and off the field, both big and small. We won't define if they're big or small. We will just say thank you and we will celebrate it. So whether you're the all-star quarterback that has a chance to go play college, or you're the kid that really doesn't like football but just kind of wants to be a part of it and you get in two plays a game, we're gonna celebrate it all the same. We're gonna unify our team, we're gonna unify our school, and by celebrating improvement, that's how that happens. So Hyde Park, it's time. It's time. Uh, buckle up. It's time to roll up our sleeves and go to work on and off the field. Let's go chase our best. I'm going to give you everything I got, and I expect you to do the same. Go Panthers. I'll open it up for questions for any of you guys that are here. Well, I was aware of Hyde Park when we lived here in our former life, and uh, before we left for Nashville to do the coaching thing, we had decided that uh, Hyde Park was a place we wanted our daughter to go to school. So for this all to come together two years later, uh, to be pursuing head coaching jobs, for there to be an opportunity here uh, where we wanted to put our daughter all along, it was just too good to be true. Yes. Is that right? Yep. Was he coaching Lipscomb? Trent was the head coach at Lipscomb. I was a special teams coordinator and assistant head coach the last two years. Uh, we lost in the state championship by a touchdown the first year, and then we uh, got a rematch this past year, and we hammered them pretty good for the state title. I feel like God has used the game of football to draw me to himself my entire life. And uh, I've, been a, I've been able to receive many great blessings through this game, and now I'm at a part of my life where it's time to give back. And when you're at a place that uh, you share the core values and the mission statement, uh, it really breaks down all the barriers between being a coach and ministering to the kids. And so I see those as the same thing. I'm not being the coach I need to be if I'm not pouring into these kids spiritually. Uh, and I think I can use football to do that most effectively given the life experiences I've had. So I'm, I'm super blessed to be here in a place like this, a community like this, a school like this, and I can't wait to pour into these boys. Were, were you always a guy that, that wanted to be a coach or did this, this just pop up? So 1987, I began playing football and I was fortunate that my first football coach ever, Jim Ledford, turned out to be the best football coach I ever had. And the impact and contributions that he made to my life remain true to this day. By the time I got to high school, Coach Lefford had been pulled up to the varsity, so I got him again. Coach Zafudo, my head coach, those two were the greatest football coaches I've ever had. And I, I began the dream then. Little did I know I'd play football for the next quarter century. Uh, but I deliberately and intentionally have been preparing all the while being a player, uh, whether it was sitting in offensive meetings with NFL offensive coordinators, asking all pro linebackers, what were you seeing on this play? Obviously, I spent a lot of time in special teams meeting rooms. Uh, I'm a student of the game. I've been trying to prepare for it. I retired in 19, took a year off. I wanted to watch my son play his senior year of high school. Uh, after about three months at home, Shannon said, you need to go get a job. <laughs> so that's when we decided to go to Nashville and, and began the coaching deal. And it only confirmed that the dream I've had since 1987 was the right one. It was mutual. I was interested. I had placed several phone calls. And then once the job was posted, uh, things started happening, Mike jumped in, and uh, before we knew it, uh, 
we got it done. Like I said, we got the closer here on the front row. So once, once they met Shannon, it was, it was a done deal. Yeah, I see the, the bones and the, the foundation here is consistent with uh, what I would look for anywhere I wanted to go. I'm, I'm excited to partner with the people here. Uh, I love a challenge. Uh, the football world would sit here and say, didn't win a game last year, won two games in the last three years, why are you going there? That's the exact place I want to go. With the families that I know that have come through Hyde Park in the past, the families that I know that are here now, uh, I want to partner with those people. I want to build this thing. I want to use faith as a, the centerpiece of what I do. Obviously, a lot of places you can't do that uh, overtly. Uh, so when you start mixing all that together and you see the potential, I mean, Hyde Park has a history of winning. It's, it's not that you can't win here. So I'm ready to put a team together. These boys will have the best coaches they've ever had in their life. Uh, we're going to pour into them like they we're going to push them like they've never been pushed before. We're going to demand excellence in the classroom, in their personal lives, in their relationships. Uh, and I feel like I've got a community of people that are ready to go arm in arm and join in that effort. And we're going to produce great young men. We're going to play pretty good special teams, too, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little old school uh, when it comes to the whole recruiting process and how things are going in the, in the game of football. I, I think we're, we're, we're skipping over some really incredible, important steps. Uh, the first, first being that you got to learn whether you wind up playing football after high school or not. And by the way, I can't wait to coach kids that never play after high school. I hope you all hear me when I say that. I, I, I want to pour into kids who will never have a chance to play college football. But in today's culture, if you don't play college football, then it was a complete waste of time. I might as well quit now. No, you're, you're missing out on so many life lessons about how to work with other people. Anybody in the professional world have to do that? Uh, how to respect authority, whether you like them or not. Anybody have to do that around here? Uh, how to be selfless. We can't just be takers in this life. We have to be givers. It's more blessed to give than to receive. I didn't write that. Guy who knows better than me wrote it. Okay? You're missing out on all this when everything's about you. My future, how many stars I have by my name, how many D1 offers I have, what can I take from a program, what can I, what can I do to promote myself. That's great for some people. But the vast majority of kids who play high school football are not in that group. And I, I'm tired of seeing kids either by their own decision or just the way the culture works being cast aside. I think we can use the game of football to teach young men life, teach them how to work hard, be part of a team, respect authority, put others before yourself. And you know what? Let's go play f high school football. Let's just go play high school football. Let's make Friday night the, for our community here at Hyde Park. Let's make Friday night a reward for grinding all week, for all of us. Faculty's grinding away in the classroom, administration is dealing with all the administration stuff, and it's not always fun, is it? Everybody just goes to work, rolls up their sleeve, works hard. We got parents working all day, some parent, you know, mom and dad, two jobs, trying to pay for kids going to private school. Everybody's working. Well, let's all join together on Friday night, and let's have a party. Let's have a good old-fashioned football Friday night Texas high school football party, recharge the batteries, and then we'll do it again. And then we'll see how many games we win when it's all said and done. Yep. What do you hope for, uh, for your first year? Daily improvement. There is no finish line in this game. There is no finish line. Uh, 
we can win a state championship and the, like I said, the very next day, what are we doing today to get better? So I could stand up here and make a bunch of headline statements. It, it's this or bad or bust as daily improvement. What are we gonna do? Literally, when I leave this press conference, my mind directly goes to what am I gonna do to pour into these boys today to make them better today? And we're just gonna start stacking day after day like that. And then the season's gonna get here in August. And we're gonna go out there and have our community party on Friday nights. And we're just gonna keep grinding. And we're gonna keep going. And we're gonna keep going. They'll let us know at the end of the season how we did. But our mindset's gonna be one step at a time, daily grind, intentional grind, no finish line. And uh, we'll see where we end up. Who, you mentioned your high school coach, mm -hmm. but any other coaches that you've had? Obviously, you had an incredible career. Who? Yeah, I would say those had the most impact on my life. I was fortunate to be around some tremendous coaches, uh, both in uh, UT and uh, when you play for the Browns, you're around a lot of coaches. Uh, <laughs> I lost track how many I, I had. Uh, you know, Randy Rogers at the University of Texas was uh, a, a huge asset to me. I, I stay in touch with him. Funny story, I wound up my last two years in Arizona. His son became my special teams coach. So the guy that used to shag balls for me at UT now was my NFL special teams coach, and I was older than him. So it's kind of funny how these things work. Uh, Jerry Rosberg was a special teams coordinator in Cleveland, the best football mind I've ever been around. Uh, and so to partner with him for six years was really good for my development as someone who wanted to coach someday, to ask questions, to uh, think through things. And he really involved me in the strategy of the game. So that was, that was really a, a great experience. Brad Seeley was considered one of the all-time great special teams coaches in the National Football League. I got to spend four years with him. Uh, Chip Kelly, I really enjoyed playing for Chip. Uh, it didn't work out so great uh, with the Niners, uh, but obviously a highly accomplished college football coach. Uh, I loved his player first approach, and that's one more thing that we're gonna be around here. We'll never put the program ahead of the player. Everything we do is about the player. Uh, both on and off the field, and Chip did a great job of that. So I, I could go on and on and on. Uh, you know, there's an old saying my father-in-law taught me, and it's take the meat and spit out the bone. And uh, all the different coaches I've had through all the years, they all have strengths, and they all have weaknesses, just like me. I have strengths, I have weaknesses. As a player, you got to learn to take the meat, take the good stuff, and get rid of the stuff that doesn't belong. And so I've learned from all of them. Everyone talks about your, your field goal against Virginia while you were at Texas. Mm -hmm. What stands out to you about your time at Texas? You know, I went to Texas when they were down, had opportunities to go to programs that were uh, competing for the national championship uh, at that time. And like I said, I've never been afraid of a challenge. And I wanted to be part of rebuilding a program. Uh, while we were there, we won three conference championships. Uh, went to two BCS Bowl games, uh, won the last Southwest Conference, won the first Big 12. And so I took a lot of pride in knowing that I was part of rebuilding Texas football and getting it back to where it belongs. Uh, that, in, that Virginia kick, the thing that is most memorable to me is that was the University, University of Texas 700th all-time win. And to have a contribution in a game like that, at a school like that, in a moment like that, is what's most rewarding to me. Parents, y'all got anything? Everybody's on such good behavior. Well, I'm gonna be around. If anybody wants to uh, grab me, talk, that'll happen. Uh, like I said, I can't wait to partner with you guys. It's going to take all of us, uh, even you guys in the media. We need, we, we, we'll, we'll work with you, and you're always welcome here. But uh, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Time to go to work and uh, roll up our sleeves. We're, we're going to get this thing going in the right direction. We good? All right.
um, we're going to take a few stills um, photos. And so, um, did you want to say something, Shannon? Oh. <laughs> uh, he's not lying. <laughs> Well, I must tell you, we were um, taking some downtime um, from the season in Nashville, and we had driven a little bit south of San Antonio. And when I say downtown, I mean it's no phones, sweatshirts, jeans, downtime. And he goes, oh, by the way, we, we have this interview we need to go to. I was like, I don't have any clothes. So I showed up and what I had. And when I walked through the conference room door, there was a sense of, we're here to look at the heart, not the person. And as that interview proceeded, it was confirming to me as I glanced at the football photo on the wall, I knew this is where we were supposed to be. I was hoping they would love us because I was already loving them. And I just needed it to then you know, have the final word. So we are more than thrilled. Our family is more than thrilled. Uh, the guys that are in here and the guys, the kids that are listening to this, you will not have a better man. He will model. He will practice what he preaches on and off the field. I'm a witness to it for what he's done with our own kids. So you need to fall in line with him because he will not steer you wrong. And we are just thrilled to be here. So thank you very much. So you can see why today is a day of celebration at Hyde Park Schools. Thank you all for being here.